Jensen, busy bringing the new recruits to the Northern Air Temple, Chorus Protection now rests in Bayfong's hands. Chapter 5, The Metal Clan. Sounds cool. I like this. Oh yeah, so Tenzin split up. He went to the air temple with the recruits. I was sad to see Tenzin go, but I'm glad to see Lin joining the party. That's awesome. As I've mentioned previously, one of the worst things about season two was that Lin wasn't there, because I was a big fan of her in season one. <laughs> Is he gonna be able to get that? playing fetch, four of the most dangerous criminals in the world are hunting you down. I think she wants you to throw it for her. She got that fast. Oh, uh, pass. Do it, Lynn. Uh oh. We just got a call on the radio about another airbender. A city called Zaofu. You know the place? Uh, never been. But I don't want you going there. I'd rest a lot easier if you were back safe in Republic City. What is she hiding? There's a lot more than an airbender. There's Lynn's secret past. That was mean. <laughs> oh. Wow! An entire city made of metal! Whoa! You should be right at home, Beifong. Hmm. She's obviously connected as, you know, the daughter of the woman who invented metal bending. It's metal. Big whoop. Just find the airbender and let's get moving. And don't tell anyone I'm here. Why not? <laughs> no I don't reason. need to explain myself to you. Just do what I say. Fine. You got it. I'm so excited pants. to learn more about Lynn. Is this everyone? Yep. Just us. So, can I meet the new airbender? Of course. Right this way. Awesome. I said in a Q&A that if I uh, was going to be any kind of bender, I'd be an earthbender. This is kind of adding points to that feeling for me. And this is the Air Acolyte Dining Hall where everyone eats. How exciting. New friends. Excuse me. Hello? My name is Yoru. I heard this was a place to come if you're a new airbender. You got that right, stranger. Is that Zaheer? It is him, isn't it? No. Oh, I got chills. That's so sinister that the first person he meets <laughs> is the kids. Ah. Oh yeah, the city is calling my name. I like it. That statue honors the first metal bender. That's awesome. Toph Beifong, who expanded the possibilities of what <laughs> benders were capable of. I know Toph would love that. One of the jokes in the comic Imbalance is that she goes around the whole city making statues of herself. Does Toph live here? Are we gonna get to meet her? I'm afraid not. She used to visit from time to time, but She's years still ago alive? she left to wander the world in search of enlightenment. No one has seen her since. Yes! Oh my god, I'm so pumped. I can't wait to see Toph. And that's exactly what she would do. Searching enlightenment, man. She just has to keep pushing it, doesn't she? She's not satisfied with being the best ever in human societal accomplishments. She has to be the best in the spiritual arena as well. Typical and awesome. So I'm guessing that's why Lynn is having an issue because she doesn't wow. have the best relationship with Is this with where the airbender Toph. lives? Is this some kind of combat training? Not exactly. They are rehearsing for a dance premiere next month. They're all a bunch of twinkle toes. The irony. That's it for today, everyone. Oh, is this... Do we have a sister? So, you're a dancer. Dancer, leader, wife, mother, collector of rare meteorites. She's Toph's daughter. Cora, why did you lie when I way asked if there was anyone else with you? What? I, I didn't. I mean... <laughs> Bolin gave it away. <laughs> when people lie, their heart rate and breathing increase. Mm. I can sense the most subtle of changes. Pop really did a lot for the city. Lynn's here. Well, I would love to say hello. Wait, you two know each other? Lynn never told you about me. No? <laughs> Why would she? I'm Lynn's sister. Yes! How great is this? There's more of them. This is like the best day of my life. Top's alive. And there's another Beifong. When I woke up this morning, I didn't realize what a great day this was going to be. Why didn't you ever tell me you had a sister? Half sister. Oh. I have nothing to say to you. Let's get into this. What's going on? Lynn, your niece is the new airbender. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, terrific. <laughs> Those are my two youngest, Wei and Win. Tops grandkids. And this is my daughter, Opal. Opal? That's a beautiful name. Thanks. I'm uh -oh. Bolin. This is where Opal's home and family are. You can train her here. Absolutely not. She's just a little worried because there are a bunch of crazy criminals after me. If you're concerned about security, right. don't be. This is the safest city in the world. Oh, uh, where have I heard that before? I'm not very good. I've never been a teacher before, so <laughs> we're in the same boat. Mm, that's gonna be cool for Cora. I actually feel like Cora would be a great teacher. 
You call yourself an airbender? Disgraceful! <laughs> it's funny how like that little moment in season two when Milo was training the what do you call them those things the momos was setting this up kind of that he's a stern <laughs> disciplinarian. It's funny. Be the leaf. Be the leaf. Now that man's a leaf. A student is only as good as his master. Wow. And the avatar is with them. No, That's a strange apparently question. she had to split off from Tenzin. I was really looking forward to meeting her. <laughs> oh my god, he's so sinister. It's cool though. So something he has in common with Amon is that he's very cool and collected. And he's patient. The fact that he's this powerful villain, right, and he can come in here and take orders from Milo and practice airbending. He has an inner strength, a resilience. He's uncluttered by emotion. You know, like he knows who he is, he knows what he wants. That's one of the things that's been great about all three villains, actually, I think. Even Tarlock. But I suspect Zaheer is more than all of them, for reasons that I'll probably get into later. I don't think I've ever had a bad meal in my life. Oh, I had plenty when Mako and I were living on the streets. I mean, you'd be surprised how bad food from a dumpster came. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know. No, it's okay, it's okay, that's all in the past. Things are great now. I got to be a pro bender, fought against a dangerous revolution, mm. became a mover star, and now I'm helping the Avatar rebuild a whole nation. That's so interesting. It feels like a natural match because she's very sheltered. And Bolin wasn't saying that to get an emotional response. He really was just thinking that out loud. And that's got to be really refreshing for someone like Opal. Things are a little bit too good here in the city though, which leads me to believe that either they're hiding something or just that the writers are setting them up to be extra vulnerable. They live this opulent, carefree life, right? In the, mo in the safest city on earth. It's a recipe for literary disaster. The world is evolving and the Earth Queen can evolve with it. Step aside. Hey everyone, my little sister is an right. expert on world affairs now. You wanna talk about what's really bugging you because I'm right here. I do. Sorry we're late everyone. <gasps> Varric! What the hell? What is what he doing here? What are you here? doing here? Yeah. Great question, Asami. I mean, what are any of us doing here? Hmm. <sighs> So Both wise, so wise. The universe decided to set me free. Where's Julie? So, I there looked she is. up my old friend Su Yin here, pitched her a few ideas, and BAM! We're in business together! Uh oh. Sure, Varric's made a few mistakes in his past, but that doesn't mean he should pay for it the rest of his life. That's what I said, kind of. People change. You haven't. Epic door slam. You and Opal seem to hit it off at dinner. Yeah, you know, she's sweet and, and pretty and super nice. Too bad she's not my type. Right, I forgot. Your type is dumb mover star or psycho ice princess. It's weird, but that probably helps him. That's some very self-aware writing. Think about how he was with, what's her name, Ginger? Like I said at that time, he was tripping all over himself to impress her and failed miserably. <laughs> but then with Opal, he's just chill Bolin. And she's like, ooh, Bolin's kind of interesting. He's had a life, you know? He's relaxed, he's genuine, he's funny. I think this is it for Bolin. I think this is his romantic match. Maybe you're right, bro. Maybe Opal is bowling material. Oh no, Thanks. don't don't do that. Yeah. No. What happened with you two? It's complicated. We didn't have a normal childhood. Neither of us knew our fathers, and Toph was always busy being chief of police. You know, it doesn't surprise me that Toph couldn't maintain a relationship. She wouldn't exactly be one to compromise, we could say. Because mom grew up in such a strict house, she gave us all the freedom in the world, hoping we'd figure out our own paths. I called it way back when in season one. That's less a credit to me and more to the writing that they had that in mind way back when. That was very smart. It makes total sense. That sounds like a good thing. And in a way it was. But we both ended up fighting for mom's attention. Lynn followed in her footsteps and became a cop. I was more of a rebel. Mom wasn't too happy with how either of us turned out. <laughs> I left home to explore the world. I sailed the seas on a pirate ship, joined a traveling circus for a while, and lived in a sandbender commune in the desert. I finally realized what I was looking for was a family. So I know this is just one side of the story, so there's probably more to it than that. But I can say that so far, I really relate to this very strongly. Sometimes you see the relationships between generations swing back and forth between extremes. And this is a big thing that I think the creators are very aware of. There's so much in these two shows about lineage, the effect our parents and ancestors have on us. There are things that you grow to dislike growing up and then you, you try your best to not be that way. But what you realize is that things are always more complicated and that swinging to the other extreme, like for example, with uh, Toph, 
giving them total freedom creates problems of its own. It's really difficult to find balance. And ultimately, I think it's the challenge of the individual to find that for themselves. Your upbringing gives you a foundation and it's always going to be an incomplete foundation. And then it's up to, to you to reconcile what exactly that starting point was, where it went wrong without blame, and then try to map your, your own trajectory and see if it's going in a place that is favorable. I think what people get stuck on is they just blame, but I think you really only need two variables. You just need something to get you through that time. You need something to launch you out into the world as best as possible. And then you need the awareness that you're in control of your own life. And from there you can map things and navigate in, in a way that's satisfactory to you. Her story specifically resonates with me very strongly because my upbringing, at least in a certain point in my life, tended to be more hands off and like you can find your own way. And I think what I was craving was structure. But rather than acknowledge that, I kind of went out into the world chaotically and I had a lot of really amazing experiences, which I'm grateful for. But now I feel I find myself more like her. I'm like starting to think more about stability. It sounds like you've created the perfect life here. Almost. I've always wanted Lynn to be a part of it, but I gave up hope long ago of her ever coming around. There's more to it than that, though. We need to hear Lynn's side of the story. Oh, she's like a diligent student. She's practicing by herself. That's great. Hey, little lady. No, 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 no. You really blowing me away with your air bending. Stop. Please stop. Why are you acting weird? Yes. Why are you acting weird? Look, I'm sorry. I just get really self-conscious when I know a girl likes me and I, I end up acting stupid. Who said I liked you? Oh no. That was a foot and mouth moment, but at least it was honest. This show always does this to me. I'm like, oh, that's a cool issue they kind of touched upon. Was that accidental? And then later they're like, nope, we're gonna dive right into this issue. Here we are diving into Bolin's weirdness. Do me a favor and stop trying. Well, don't stop trying. Just stop trying so much. Just be yourself. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I guess I could give that a shot. <laughs> That's easier said than done, though. <clears throat> Get out! Oh, hey, Cora. Can I steal you away from Bolin for a minute? It couldn't have waited. <laughs> Let go your earthly tether. Enter the void. Empty and become wind. That was awesome. What were you reading? A poem by Gu Lahima. The wisest airbender who ever lived. I want to hear that again. Let go, Let go your, your earthly tether. tether. Enter, Enter the, void. the void. Empty. Empty. And, and become, become wind. wind. I feel lighter just saying that. Iki. You should be in bed. Come on. You seem to know a lot about airbender history for someone who just got airbending. I've always admired the culture. Zahir. Wow, she knew. That was awesome. I need and he has help. the glider! Wow, she's kicking ass. Look at her. I did not expect that. <laughs> Hold it right there! Can't touch him. Yeah. I'm afraid I have other plans. <laughs> Even though he got discovered, it was a really nice touch having him infiltrate like that. There's something so sinister about it because we're expecting like this big full-on attack like the last episode. But nope, he's just going there as an air disciple, reading poems, and being nice to the kids, which is really interesting. I know my family can be a little crazy and overwhelming sometimes, but I would love it so much if you would be a part of it. Get out. Sorry, did I say something wrong? Get out! Why don't you focus on fixing the world and stop trying to fix my family? Sue's right. You're always going to be a bitter, lonely woman. Ouch. What do we not know? Quite the ending. It's possible that she knows something that even her sister doesn't. Maybe in her mind, she's protecting them from something, which is a painful burden. Yeah, that episode just kicked up my enjoyment of the season times a thousand. That was awesome. So far, the season has been a lot of setup, but the pieces are super high quality. There's so much going on, I can't wait to see what's in store. But that's gonna do it for this episode. I'll see you tomorrow for episode six.